my friends good morning it is a beautiful summer morning and i am up early trying to uh, get out before the heat kicks in and i am looking at my drift roses that are in my backyard and they are spent so we had a bad hailstorm that took off most of the roses that were in bloom but i do have some others peeking through so what i want to do today is just come and clean these up and get them looking fresh again, ready for a new bloom. So the lovely thing about drift roses is that you really don't have to do a thing to them. They will come back and start to bloom for you without doing a thing. However, since it is one of my focal points in my backyard, I do like to clean them up. So that's what I'm gonna be doing today. I'm just gonna be coming in and cutting off these spent blooms, just kind of shaping them up a little bit, getting them ready so that they'll give me a nice flush of blooms for the next round. Okay, so thanks for joining me. Something I always have with me also, some Clorox wipes, or if you have like a little alcohol spray that you can spray on your blade, you don't want to pass any type of diseases or anything onto the roses onto the next rose. So when you go from rose to rose, you definitely want to wipe your blades down, get them nice and clean. All right, so do you see this new growth right here? I'm going to cut right in front of that new growth and I'm going to let that sprout up and that will hopefully give me new blooms. So instead of just clipping the spent blooms here or deadheading it, as they would say, I'm actually going to go ahead and prune these back. Uh, what you'll do is the same principles as you would be clipping a regular rose. I am actually going to go and clip right above the nearest leaf sprout that has five leaves or more. Okay, so in this case, instead of just deadheading up here, I'm going to go back down. I'm going to cut this guy back pretty, pretty good. So I'm actually going to cut right here. All right, so here's a good one to show you guys. You can see there's new growth right here. See this new growth? But it's right on the edge or the tip of the, all of this blush of blooms that was here. And so I don't want to keep that. I also see a fresh bud coming in right here. But as I said earlier, I want to go ahead and trim back. So I'm going to pull this away. And do you see these leaves here sprouting out? I'm actually just going to cut right above that. When I started cutting into them, I realized that a lot of them had spider mites. So I wind up taking out a lot more than I thought I would. Um, also, they were just a monstrous mess, so they needed to be cleaned up. Okay, so, hey guys, you always want to clean out the debris from your roses. It's just where disease and insects and everything can harbor and hang out. So um, anytime you see fallen leaves or anything hanging out under the canopy of the rose you definitely want to try to get that out of there so for instance if you have spider mites that just keep coming back more than likely it's because they're in the debris and they're just have a nice little happy home Well, I guess because of all the rain that we got, a bunch of ants decided to move their little houses up here. So I'm going to put some of this diatomaceous earth on the uh, ant pile that's up on this rose. They are getting too comfy for my... Too comfy for my comfort. How's that? Just spread it all up in there along the base. All right, and then we got this $1.50 compost. My husband does an awesome job of going to Lowe's, getting open bags, $1.50 for this awesome compost. So I'm going to go ahead and mix that in with the soil and some earthworm castings. 
and then water it in real good and call it a day. Since I'm doing this, I am not going to need any type of fertilizer. I did apply slow release when the season at the beginning of spring, so this should definitely get them through the next set of blooms and then some. But I'm just going to stir that in real good. And these roses are set up on drip. So anytime you can get roses up on drip, it would be beneficial. So you're not watering the leaves or the flowers. And if you can't get them on drip, then at least just water them in the morning so that they're not sitting in water overnight, creating more chance for disease and bugs. I wasn't thinking now I'm gonna have to put more diatomaceous earth right here, so. As soon as I watered it, it just, it's not effective. So anyways, I'll show y'all the final results, how terrible it looks. All right, pretty sad, pretty sad, but I'm not that worried about it. Um, I have some flocks right back there that's supposed to, about to be given on a show. I've got lesser catmint in bloom, and then my plumerias are also in bloom. So I have plenty of, plenty of color. Uh, the vincas look like they're missing a whole row back there, don't they? But um, those drift roses will fill out this front area so quickly. The heat is upon us, and it is not going to be easy for these roses, but neither would the spider mites. So I am taking a chance. Treating them would have been really difficult. The growth was too thick for me to really be able to treat effectively for the spider mites. So it was just easier for me to cut them back. You really want to do the pruning in early spring, late winter, and go ahead and cut them down to probably about like six to eight inches from the base. Uh, and then throughout the season, deadhead as needed. And if you're like me and they just get too big and too monstrous, you can cut them back if you're not about to approach three digit temperatures. <laughs> but I would recommend you just deadhead your roses and as I said at the very beginning of the video, you really don't even have to do anything. They are self-cleaning, so that choice is yours. But, um, so anyway, that's all. Thank you guys always for joining me. I so appreciate it, and I hope you guys have a great day, and don't forget, if you like the video, please subscribe. Hit that button and subscribe.